Hey y'all, welcome to So Crafty. Today uh, I'm making these shopping bags out of feed sacks. And I wanted to show you how I do one. And they are just so cute. So you can make them out of dog cat food bags and obviously livestock feed sacks, horses, horse feed sacks, cow feed sacks, chickens, whatever the case may be. This one's a bird one. Look how cute that is. And they are just adorable and so they're easy to make and they're fun to use. And I took mine to Walmart the other day for grocery shopping just to kind of test them out and they actually work really good. So, and you can get a lot in them too. So the first thing you get, need is just get one of these old feed, or these feed bags from somewhere. I had a lot of people uh, give me some because I don't have any kind of chickens or anything, but I do have dogs and cats. So, first thing you want to do is I wash these in my bathtub in hot water with dishwashing liquid, and I just kind of put them in there and just kind of push them down, and like you're scrubbing on one of those old washboards from a long time ago, like you're you know, scrubbing your, your clothes, washing your clothes from a long time ago. And so that's what I do with these. And then I set them out to dry. You want to make sure that they are completely dry before you start sewing on them. And, and then I'll show you what I do after that. So now it's, I've already washed this one and it's already been dried. So now I'm going to cut my handle. Okay. So I want to determine where my handle is going to be. I'm going to move you down like this so you can see what I'm doing. So first of all, you want to see where your picture is and how much of the picture do you want it to show. So for the big ones like these, I cut my handles about four inches. For the smaller ones, for the smaller bags, I cut them about three and a half inches. This is a 50 pound bag. It says right there. So I cut these about four, four inches wide. And then the 30 pound bag or less, I usually cut about three and a half inches. But it just depends on where you want your, how you want your picture to be. First thing I wanna do though is, I wanna straighten up this edge. It is, it is a little bit jagged right here. So I'm just going to Kind of making it, make it straight, straighten it up a little bit. So, but I don't want to cut too much off, but I do want to kind of make it straight a little bit. So I'm just gonna match it up along the edge here. I'm gonna move this down a little bit more. So, so I'm just taking a line from my cutting mat and I'm just lining it up all the way down. And then I'm gonna choose a line from my cutting mat and then just cut it off using that. So, now I'm just gonna trim this part off, just like that. Move all that away, and then, now you have a nice straight edge. Okay. And then I'm going to decide which way I want my handles to be. So, let's see. So, for instance, if I cut four inches off here, I still want to have a pretty good, pretty good part of my picture to show. And then you also want to make sure that at the bottom you're going to square it to make the bag part. So if this is one, let's see, one, two, three, four, this is four inches. And then if I cut four inches off from the top here, let's see, one, two, three, four. I'll still have a little bit to play with whenever I do the top. This is probably one of the most trickiest parts to decide where you want to cut your handle from. So if I cut my handle from here and then I have this, it'll still show 
a little bit, but if I do like this, you know what? I'm going to cut from the top here, but for this one, I'm actually going to just do three and a half inches because I would like more of this producer's pride to show. So I'm just going to go three and a half inches, but most of it's not going to show. So a little bit's going to show. So yeah, I'm just going to cut three and a half inches. And if a little bit of the producer's pride is cut off, that's okay. I mean, you're not doing it for like the name. I mean, we're mainly doing it for the picture, but that's, in, that's entirely up to you. So I'm cutting off three and a half inches here. So I have my handle and now I'm just going to cut the ends to separate it. So now I have my two handles. Now I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to create the handles doing like this. I'm going to get me some clips. I'm going to use clips instead of pins, obviously, because you don't want to if you use a pin, you're going to poke a hole in your bag and you don't want that. So, I'm going to fold the ends over like this. And then I'm going to fold it over again. So, I folded the ends over to meet in the middle. And then I folded it over again and I'm just going to clip it in place. And then I'm going to do that along the edge. going down the edge that one edge that side edge now I'm going to do it on the other side and now I have one of my handles ready to sew now I'm going to do the other side just going to fold these over Fold the edges over to meet in the middle. And then I'm gonna fold the middle over. And then I'm just going to fold that in over to match it. And then I'm gonna fold the other end over and match that. So now I have my two handles ready to sew. And I'm going to set those aside for now. And now I'm going to prepare the bag. Another thing that I'm going to do is after you wash it, I'm going to wipe it off with the Clorox wipe just to kind of do a little bit more cleansing with it. First thing you want to, now you want to just turn this right side. It's a little noisy. Sorry, I think I said in right side out. You're supposed to turn it inside out. So that's what I've done here. And then, so now I'm gonna take a Clorox wipe and I'm just gonna wipe it down just to have extra cleaning, just to kind of, what do you call it? D. Just kind of sanitize it a little more. And then just wipe down really good. And then, like I said, the dog food ones need to be soaked overnight to get rid of the smell. And I still do the same thing with this one. And soaking over overnight, that will help. But if you still have a smell in your bag, I've got some of this. It's called Smell Away, and that will help too. I've sprayed some in there and that has helped, but I'm sure you could use like Febreze and those kinds of things too. I'm sure that would help also. Okay, so now I have folded my bag flat and have turned it inside out, and now I'm going to create the top. And I'm just gonna take the edge and I'm just gonna fold it down a little bit and then I'm gonna fold it down a little bit more. So what I did is I don't measure, 
I just kind of guesstimated. So what is this? This is probably about an inch or so. And so that's what I've done. And I'm gonna do the same thing all the way around. So I've just folded this over, fold it over twice in other words. That way you don't have a raw edge right here. And now, continuing to do that all the way around. And then after I fold it, I just clip it in place. And doing the same thing here. And after I fold it over, I just clip it in place. it over and what I like to do is just kind of look at it from the top and just kind of make sure it's even and I believe this side is lower so I'm going to bring this up just a little bit now just like that that's better okay so now we have the top all folded down, ready to go. We're gonna set this aside though, and I'm gonna sew my handles first. So I'm gonna bring you up here so you can see what I'm doing. I'll pull you a little closer also. Okay. So this is my machine that I use to sew these with. This is a 1984 machine. It's a Singer and it's heavy, it's all metal, and it works a lot better than my brother Luminaire XP2 that I have for um, other projects. This one works a lot better. The My brother Luminaire, it just, I don't know, it was just really, the tension was just not working. It was just not liking this kind of material. So, I had to break out this one I got at a garage sale. Okay, now I'm, I'm just going to Sew a stitch on each side, close to the edge, all the way down. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that your stitch length is on the longest stitch because if you go too close, then it'll kind of break, break your bag and you don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and just sew down one side and then the other. same thing to the other handle. Stitch down one side and then stitch down the other. trim trim my edges it doesn't need to be trimmed I'm sorry not trim my edges trim my loose threads and I have got both both sewed on one on each side and so these are my handles I'm done with my handles now I'm gonna attach them to my bag and here's how I do that I'm gonna bring this down a little bit so you can see. Mm. 
Move this back. So. Okay. Okay. Now, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to Okay, now I'm gonna attach the handle to the bag. So I'm just gonna find two lines on my mat and I'm just going to line it up one side and then same with the top just to make sure it's all straight. And I'm gonna grab one of my handles. I'm gonna count about seven over from the edge. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then what I did was I counted my lines and then I'm just going to clip that in place. And then I'm going to count seven from the other side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about right here. And then I'm going to clip that in place. Now I want to make sure that my handle is not twisted. So, and it's not, so just make sure that when you put it on there, it's not twisted. Now I'm just gonna measure it on each side just to make sure that it's pretty even or centered. So that's seven, it's a little over seven. I'm gonna bring this over just a little bit more. So that's seven, and that's seven, great. So now I'm just gonna sew this in place. So I'm gonna bring this up so you can see. Bring it a little bit closer. Okay, so now I'm just going to sew this in place. Just like this. So you want to stitch the bottom first. Right here, I'm going to just make a stitch right along the bottom first of the folded edge to sew, to secure the handle in place. sew the top of it in place and I'm gonna back stitch over it and then sew over it again just to make it a little bit more secure so. now I'm gonna back stitch and now I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side other handle on and this is how I do that basically what I do is I just match it up with the other side just like that that way you don't have to measure or anything like that it just makes it pretty um, actually I'm gonna make it turn it this way it just makes it pretty easy to match it and that way you know you have it even on the one on the back, or the one on the other side. So just like that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. This over just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing as this. Just so it in place. Sew the bottom down first to attach it, and then I'll fold it over and sew over the top. Okay. So I've attached it. And then I'm going to 
fold it over and sew it over the top. Back stitching to secure it in place. Here's what I do with this one because my machine it's got this kind of awkward little thing here and it won't I can't take it off so it doesn't have a very big underneath to you know make it slide through and this kind of gets in my way but this is actually an embroidery machine too and so that's why it has that but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sew all the way around the top I'm gonna sew around the top edge and then I'm going to sew around the bottom edge. But what I'm going to do is sew it inside like. Okay. So I'm sewing along the edge. I'm going to start off and then back stitch. And then I'm going to continue around. Okay, so now I've sewn all the way around the top. Now I'm gonna sew around the bottom. Stitches. I did two stitches around top and bottom. All right. So now that that's done, now we're going to make the bottom. And first, you're just going to sew a single stitch around the edge, along the edge, and you're going to back stitch too when you start. And you're going to do that twice just to reinforce it. So I'm going to go back and do it right above that other one. Okay. 
Okay, so now it's sewn the bottom. Now we wanna box the bottom. The way I do that is, so I'm gonna put my hand in here and I'm gonna open it up and then I'm gonna match up the handles like this. And I'm going to use my hands to open it up all the way from the tip. Make sure the corner is out. Okay. and flat. And then your corners like this. So now it's going to look like you're going to have this diamond shape in the bottom. And then I kind of put it up on another line along the line, the top up. And then I kind of look down on the sides here to make sure that it's pretty much even and good, so it looks good. So now I'm going to measure how wide do I want my opening or my boxed bottom to be. So I'd say about five inches. It's usually about what I do. So I just measure five inches from the corner here. Let's see. Yeah, let's see, that's five. Yeah, five inches is a pretty good one. And then, I draw a line with a marker, because I'm gonna sew on that line. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. Then I'm just gonna line this up with the mark that I have already made. And then I'm just gonna draw another line. And now I'm gonna sew, I'm gonna sew a stitch on these lines and I'm gonna sew two stitches. So I'm gonna sew one stitch along the black line and I'm going to reverse. So I'm gonna back up. And then I'm gonna sew another straight line. And then I'm gonna reverse again. All the way back. Then I'm going to do that again. I'm gonna just move up just about a fourth of an inch from that black line towards the bag, not towards the corner. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Make another line of stitch. Reverse, forward, reverse. Just to give it a little bit more stability. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this side. Reverse. Right above it. Okay. Now I'm going to cut all my loose threads. Cut my 
those threads here. I try to cut them as I go. people give me these bags and then I've also I'll pick them up off the side of the road also okay so now we want to turn it right side out to just clip my threads. bag I just made out of a beet sack. I think this was one that was given to me. And then here's the inside. And then I did not cut off those triangles. So notice that when I made the box, I did not cut it off because I think that just gives it a little bit more stability. But there you go. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for other sewing and crafting tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.
this because it, it's easier for me to sew around, sew around the edge if that makes any sense. 